Stefan. Thank you very much. So I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to have heard what Hugo just told you about. And I also can state that it's, it's really official. The Internet of Things takes over big data as the most hyped technology. And we, as researchers, who have done more than 10 years of research on the Internet of Things, are not surprised about that. But uh, a little bit, uh, it's a little bit funny, because if you know at the same time that still 99.4% of all things are not connected, um, you see how big the hype really is. What happens if somebody stands up like the Gardner guys and say, okay, the Internet of Things now is the biggest hype in the world, um, is that manufacturers of all these things come to you like the manufacturer of these bicycles and I say, yeah, when can I, when I, when can I get the Internet of Things? Um, can, I, can I have the Internet of Things and where would I put the Internet of Things to in that bike? And before you start to talk to that, the next one comes with the shoes and uh, then the next one comes and wants to have a connected uh, guitar and then came one with a chewing gum and he wanted to connect his chewing gums to the web. And that was the point where we said, okay, hey guys, what, what really do you want with a connected product? I mean, you make good products, but why would you want to connect them uh, to the Internet of Things? And there was a very surprising answer and it was really a horizontal problem they, they were talking about. They're producing cool stuff and they lose contact the day they ship the product. So they are totally disconnected to their end consumers by this barrier called retailer or distribution. And they all hope that they can bridge that barrier, that they can get connected to their end consumers via their products for three reasons. First of all, they know some of the products need some support and we could ship support processes. We could, tra could transform our uh, production business into a production and service business. Second, they knew that um, People who bought already your products are five to seven times more likely to rebuy, again, a product of you. And then they hope that they will get, uh, like, uh, can move into the co-creation space where they get feedback of the consumers. They only can do that if they know who the customer is, and most manufacturers don't know it today. So then we, get, we went back and we said, take a big cloud of Internet of Things terms, which are really the most important, which is the most important concept part in what we, what we are always talking about when we talk about the Internet of Things. And it is identity. If a thing has an identity, if anything has an identity, a unique identity, not an article number on, a, on an item level, then of course it gets possible to attach any kind of information and service to that thing. And that's what we are doing with our company, Quip. Um, imagine this is like uh, LinkedIn for things. So has a name, it has a, it has a picture, it belongs to family, it's not your family, it's the family of the vehicles, for example, here. It's owned, it's not married, and so on. But anyway, you can transfer a lot of, of these uh, ideas you see on, on social networks to things, and you can attach any kind of information. I really go through fast here. You could uh, ask a bike who in the same city has the same bike, meet the designer, ask, to, uh, ask questions to the designer. You can attach maybe boring stuff like the manuals, but uh, it's, it's still important stuff you can ship along or um, you, you, you put insurance policies or kind of reminders and lost and found services and so on onto these bikes. So um, it's a very conceptual view, of course, and we hope that somebody's coming up with a long smartphone, but we, we realized with the bending factor is going to be um, a problem, um, most probably. Imagine you buy a new bike, and on the bike there is a label simply saying, hey, why don't you check in on me with your Facebook account? New here, I go to the bike, to the bike's website, I check in on the bike, and when I've checked in, um, I see maybe six areas. Um, yeah, getting started on how to make the first steps, pimp your bike, all the documents, the boring stuff, but important, maintain and protect, which the manufacturer may use with his service providers to, to do some load balancing and so on. Contact us, uh, community board attached to the bike, so that's the stuff we do. And, Interestingly enough, we see there's completely different um, areas where we can apply this technology. So this is again with the chewing gum manufacturers. It's Swiss German, you probably don't understand it. What he wanted to do is he wanted to give people the chance to glue a greeting onto a chewing gum and to send it to a friend. And when the, the friend checks in on the, on the chewing gum, he sees the greeting of, and, and he, he learns who the person was who sent him that uh, chewing gum. So this was kind of a funny uh, trial. Um, what are we going to do? I mean, we say today, we need like a, a, a very horizontal thing service engine. This is a very abstract engine um, which has APIs to different front ends and maybe for example one for 
brands of uh, premium, premium um, producers of durable goods, and one maybe for FMCGs. And there will be many, many partners over the time who come up with industry-specific solutions like for fashion or for uh, cars or for uh, infrastructure things or whatever. We don't even care. We want to provide the API at a certain time. And of course, you would have APIs to other backends too at a certain time. So that's a little bit the story what we are doing today. Um, still in early stage, but uh, with very um, big customers already. And uh, yeah, we hope to launch at least one or two of these verticals on our own and maybe a million of other verticals with you together. If you want to take one thing um, out of that room, what I've been talking about, those who sow identity will re-up interaction. And a lot of what we are doing is about generating interaction with end consumers in the end. So think about where you have to attach an identity because only then you can create that kind of interaction you're searching for. Thank you very much. <laughs>